How do we create performance testing and validation capabilities? This is one of the big problems when it comes to aerospace and defense. You may make a product, but there is nobody here to test your product. The only testing facilities that are available is in the public sector. And they have their own priorities or you know their own uh, programs. So therefore, there is no capability to test a product. We made an artillery gun two and a half years ago and I was waiting to get a, uh, my ordnance, which is the barrel, tested by actually firing some shells in it. And for two and a half years, I couldn't get it. I had to then send it to a United States Army Ordnance Center by taking, you know, ITAR permissions and all kinds of things, which I don't know how, but we got it in less than one month. And get this tested in the U.S., and then show it on a film to everybody in Delhi and then suddenly everybody woke up and said we will test your product. So we have some of these, these problems. A big thing on how do you do investigation and failure analysis because when you are doing new products, you are doing research, you know things always don't go right the first time. So how do you create a very strong capability on that? And then all the new product design and technology and prototype development. And this is what we do in uh, our technology center. We have a tie up with the Fraunhofer Institute uh, uh, in Germany. We take a lot of their help in terms of new areas. We are now recently tied up with uh, the AMRC center uh, of University of Sheffield, which is one of the catapult centers of uh, uh, the UK government. Uh, largely connected with aerospace component and uh, component machining. We are tied up with the University of uh, the Warwick University, which is extremely well known in their manufacturing expertise, their advanced manufacturing capabilities. Uh, a Deakin University in Australia, far away from here, but they have some excellent professors who have, are doing work in metallurgy and materials. And therefore, we have, and of course, with a lot of Indian universities, IIT Pawai, IIT Chennai, the Pillai Institute of Technology in Pilani, of which I am an alumni. So we use all the capabilities that we can get connected into to leverage our research and uh, development. Uh, just a glimpse of some of the things that we do in our research and development. Three years ago, we set up 3D printing in metals. Today, we commercially 3D print parts in titanium, in aluminum, in steel, in stainless, in high temperature alloys. We do this on a, on a commercial basis. And we have made hundreds of components using this. We make a lot of components for our own maintenance requirements on equipment using 3D printers. So this is something that we have uh, uh, got a reasonably good experience in terms of making components, understanding the process, understanding technology. We are doing the same work on electron beam. How do you use electron beam processing? Not just for welding, not just for joining materials, but how, you know, there's a lot of things that electron beam uh, stuff can do. So we have started work on creating, uh, we have now created a lab for our electron beam processes. Advanced robotics. We use a lot of robotics in our company. We have a couple of hundred robots, but those are those standard robots that are in a metal cage. Now we are getting into advanced robotics. Advanced robotics are human friendly robots that can work right next to uh, a human being, but make the person's work a lot easier, which, can, which has the ability to learn from a person very simply instead of programming. So we are working on some of these things. We are now working on uh, technology in the area of optics. How do you use simple cameras? I mean, how do you take your iPhone and put it in front of a machine and create uh, enough software algorithms and processes to connect what's happening in the machine to the people that you want to connect. I mean, the, the things that you can do today with technology, with digital technology, is just almost uh, 
unbelievable. And you can do things without having to spend a fortune. So these are some of the things that we do. We have a metal injection molding lab. We make little, little components, precision made with all kinds of, you know, small holes or kinds of things in it. So all these new technologies are being done and developed at our center there. Our, co our current collaborations with leading academic institutions worldwide, as I talked about uh, all the IITs uh, uh, in India, the Deakin University, the Fraunhofer, Universe, uh, Fraunhofer Institute, the Catapult Center in the UK, and just recently, last month, we have tied up with the University of Texas to do work in electromagnetic because electromagnetic driven uh, hardware is going to be the future in many of the things that we are going to do. So we have started some work on that. I want to give you a live example of a real technology collaborative work that we have done with DRDO. And this is to build the advanced uh, toward artillery gun in India, the most advanced artillery gun on the planet today. It's fully electric, electric drive. It, it has a chamber of 27 uh, liters, and uh, it was fired at a pressure of 560 MPa, the highest pressure that an artillery gun was ever fired at. And this was something that was a collaborative work between ARD, which is, an, which is a DRDO arm in Pune, and uh, uh, Bharat Forge. The contract from ARD was given to us in April 2015. That was one and a half years ago. And the gun was fully ready, 100% manufactured in our plant. I won't go into the details, but the barrel, the bridge, the carriage, the axle, uh, the APU. APU we didn't make, but we bought it from a company in Pune, Cummins, who makes the engines. Uh, the drive-by-wire technology, which was developed by us, all the electronic technology except the fire control system. Everything was done in-house. And in less than uh, uh, 17 months from the trade of contract, the gun was delivered for trials to Barasur. We were given five days to, for trials to fire because that's the time it takes. Maybe we were lucky we finished it in less than five hours. That means everything went right the first time. We are building six other artillery platforms, including the famous ultralight howitzer, which will be ready by July. That is completely out of titanium. The, the army was so happy with uh, the, the way the gun performed during the trials that for the first time, I think, in the history of independent India, a private sector weapon was showcased in the Republic Day Parade. So that's our gun getting showcased in the Republic Day Parade. इस दस्ते का नेतृत्व 307 मीडियम रेजिमेंट के कैप्टन सब्री पीर एम कर रहे हैं। इस दस्ते में पहली झांकी एडवांस टोड आर्टिलरी गन सिस्टम की है। ये भारत सरकार के मेक इन इंडिया पहल के अंतर्गत डीआरडीओ द्वारा विकसित एक स्वदेशी अस्त्र प्रणाली है। नवीनतम सैन्य संसाधनों के साथ रक्षा अनुसंधान एवं Now we'll come to Dr. Kota's famous uh, <laughs> topic of uh, how do we develop a gas turbine uh, engine. Two years ago, when this aero show was going on. We had a meeting and of course uh, on an open uh, platform I had said that our company will start the process of developing 
jet engines. Now, clearly developing jet engine is like a 10, 15 year program. It's not something that's going to happen overnight. But you have to start somewhere. You have to start uh, exactly the same way as I explained before. How do you create the talent? How do you create the capability? How do you put small building blocks together? And how do you move ahead and make a plan? So we said, let's develop a 120 kg thrust engine. This can be easily used for uh, UAVs or for uh, targets for uh, uh, shooting down uh, uh, flying objects, etc. And we, did the, we started this program one year ago. Uh, we had no knowledge about jet engines, so we had to take help from a lot of people who have retired from GTRE, from HAL, and they have exceptional talents in, in all of them. I mean, Dr. Pralada and many others who have helped us uh, make this dream come into reality. Our, our uh, let's say, contribution in this was create a structure, give whatever inputs that were required, and manufacture whatever products we can manufacture in our own facility. We have a pretty good facility to make a lot of things, including blisks and, uh, uh, you know, rotating components, etc. And, uh, I mean, I was very pleasantly surprised that day before yesterday I got a, a mail from our team in Bangalore, and this, uh, our jet propulsion lab, we call it our jet propulsion lab, is located in Bangalore. It's a, it's a small facility with a group of 15, 20 engineers, but highly qualified experienced people who are guiding them uh, with all the software uh, capabilities of designing turbines from scratch. So including CFD and everything else is all available there. And then they take the help of our manufacturing facilities in Pune to make uh, the components. Some of these components have even been 3D printed uh, in terms of uh, making it. So uh, Dr. Kota, this is... Uh, as per your, uh, uh, you know, what you told me two years ago, uh, we have done something. Uh, it's an initial phase, but this shows the reliance, self-reliance part of India. You know, there is no rocket science behind anything. If you can take a product, if you can take an idea or take an objective, create building blocks, of what is required, understand what are the basics required to make it happen. Put adequate talent and resources, financial and otherwise, behind it, you can make this happen. This engine was, the whole program started less than one year ago, and in one year it was designed and manufactured here in Bangalore. And now we're going to send it in the next three months for testing, just to see whether uh, it meets all the design parameters and so on and so forth. So they have now taken the next program to build a 350 kg engine. And in Pune, we have taken up a program to build, start work on a helicopter engine, which is about uh, 1,000 to 1,900 to 1,200 kilogram thrust uh, shaft engine uh, uh, for helicopters. So. We are moving in that direction. We know this will take five years, seven years, you know, a fairly long period of time. We are not expecting uh, miracles to happen here. But for sure, I mean, I see a lot of companies in India now beginning to move in this direction, beginning to do things that they never did before. And this is the real make in India process that is beginning to take place. If we can get 100, 200 companies in high technology area, in the aerospace technology, to start making things. I can assure you that in less than five to seven years, we will build an ecosystem that will make the true make in India happen through self-reliance and through technology collaborations within our own ecosystem. Of course, that doesn't mean we don't need help from outside. Of course, we need help from outside. But we cannot do it at the cost of technology reliance. And that's our message, or let's say 
what we as a private company understand in terms of what make in India really means. There are some other things that we are doing, but we won't go to that. Uh, we are a company that's always driven by innovations. We have always done things uh, uh, differently. Uh, you know, making artillery weapons was not something that we were